Rafi and Glee live stream. Hopefully, we don't say. F Boom. Hooray! Here we are. Hello. Hi. Hi, everybody. Thank you for being here. Look at all these party people. Party people. Hi, Karen and Sarah and Jack and Isabi and Chris and um, Diane and Zara and Artist Haven and Jenny and <laughs> Hannah and Zara and Lucy, Donna, Tempest, George and Stephanie and Cameron and Leah and Linda and Sweetie's Cat World. Hi, you guys. And Susan. Yay. Hi. <laughs> what is up, you guys? How are you doing? I hope you're all doing amazingly. Yes. Jenny made it back from Iowa with a few minutes to spare. Meanwhile, she was multitasking and sending me information that was helpful and all kinds of stuff. That's pretty awesome. Trish is here. Hi from New Zealand. Hi, Trish. Hi, and hi, Kathy and Becky. Oh, sound and video are good. Great. Oh, yeah. Thank you. The, the microphone <laughs> helps. <laughs> Naomi's here. Hi, Naomi. Hey, Naomi. Hi, is Angel. Angela. Lee is here. Tim. Sweetly Dark Art. Liz. All right. So we are, we're live. This is awesome. I'm very happy that we're able to do our lives once a month on the main channel. We call it the main channel. So like I our know. old YouTube <laughs> channel, we call the main channel. A lot of times people are like, what do you mean by main channel? I referenced the main channel answering a question for somebody, and they were like, what's the main channel? I was like, oh, the Art Tips channel. That's the main channel. Christina, hi from Hungary. Hi, Christina. Hi. Tara. Hey, Tara. I think I handed, handled my business pitch failure pretty good today. Well, of course you did. You did yes, amazing. I think you did. Rural uh, Saskatchewan, Canada here. Oh, hi, awesome. Danita. That's awesome. Hi, Stufficorn. Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. That is a, a fun word to say. Yeah, Saskatchewan. I just said it wrong. Sorry. Hi, Holly. Hi, Dana. Okay, so we're here. We're live. We'll give you a quick update, and then you could throw questions at us. Sweetie's Cat World, thank you. Oh, Clee, I love your new song. I've lost track to how many times I've heard it. Love you guys. Thank oh, you so thank much. You. That means the world to us. And can I just say... Thank you all so much for checking out our new song. We put a lot of love and work into our new song. And for all of you that checked it out on any platform, be it YouTube's or the Spotify or the Amazon or Apple Music, wherever you listen, thank you for listening. It is greatly appreciated. Guys, this is Klee's first time like starting this new... Uh, it's not new because it's something that she's done in the past as far as music. But this is the first time that she's taking the reins of her music career and putting music out there. And your support is just... It means the world, seriously. And for those of you who have not checked it out but wish to, the song is called Fools, I Fold My Underwear by Better on the Drums, which is us. And you can find it literally anywhere and you get Amazon your music. Amazon Music. Uh, Pandora and Deezer and iHeartRadio. Yeah. <laughs> All the places, so Hello thank you. Hello from Ireland. Hi. Hi. Zara knows our channels. Z main, main, main Music, music adventure. adventure. Yeah. Yep. And, and podcasts. And we have podcast. a podcast channel. That's, that's one thing that I will recommend to people out there that are thinking about doing another channel. Um, if you have a YouTube channel, um, think twice about it. Honestly, I kind of wish everything was just on the main channel. If we could go back in time, we would have definitely had our adventure channel infused with our main channel. Our band channel had to be separate because yeah. the distributor automatically, YouTube automatically makes a separate channel. I was saying it while I was doing laundry yesterday, said Lucy. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. The main event. Yeah, this is the main event. Hi, Nanu. Hi, Connie. Main here. Hi. Hi, Clover. Isa B wants to know, is ro Rosen paper useful for art? Rosen. I can't see where it's at. How's it spelled? Rosen. Oh, Rosen paper. I'm useful not familiar. For art. Don't know. Don't know. I'll have to look that up. Definitely. Or if anybody can help us out. Yeah. Uh, if you could explain what Rosen paper is. 
Hope you don't mind, but my chickens are here too. We do not mind. We don't Leah. mind at all. Nina says, hi, I just finished listening to the audio versions of the Rogue Artist books. Still need to leave a review for them, but very cool. Oh, thank you, Nina. <laughs> that 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 means the world to me. That's my that's my thing. Um, I've always wanted to write. I've wanted to be a writer. I, I was that little kid that was like, I'm going to be an artist. I'm going to be a writer. I want to play music. I want to do the thing. So like that means the world to me. Me putting my books out there was terrifying. Totally. But you did it like a rock star. <laughs> um, hi, Clover. Christina said, yeah, you could just do playlists for it. But hey, you already have multiple channels. So yeah, totally. If yeah, we could go back, that is exactly how we would have done it. Clover's like, my Cameo 4 arrived. That's nice. awesome, Clover. I love it when you have an unboxing moment at the live stream because mm-hmm. then we can be excited with you. Artist Haven's like, I'm weird because I like to keep them separated, the channels. Yeah. And it's everyone's prerogative, right? I mean, the whole idea was, so the podcasts are usually about an hour long, right? And so I was like, okay, so for anybody that wants to sit there, play the podcast and play them, you know, uh, that's cool. Because like usually our channel, the longest video will be about 20 minutes. So I was like, I don't want to confuse, I don't want to confuse people. And then with our adventure channel, I was like, yeah, but that's like us, just us, you know, like what we're doing, moving and stuff. So nobody on our main channel or our main channel is going to care about that. As it turns out, like everybody that's on any of the other channels, that's people. It's from here. It's from here. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So. Lesson learned. But yeah, to each their own. If you like them separated, then you like them separated. Any paper is useful for art. That's, you know, I agree with that. And as far as I'm curious about rosin paper, like what, what is rosin paper? Is it different? What kind of paper is it? Um... It's somewhere in the comments. I'll 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 find it. Okay. Sa- oh, thank you, Sandy. Sandy's like, hit that like button. Be helpful. Be generous. Thank you. Leo, glad I'm catching the live chat. A rainy day here. Excited for some Rafi and Klee. Awesome. Thanks for being here, Leo. Isabi says, paper used for protection of hardware? Uh, I don't know. Paper used for protection of hardware. Um, it's intriguing it is intriguing i mean to be honest with you i used just about i know i used wax paper on a collage that i was working on because i needed to douse it with oil to have it semi-transparent for the images underneath to come out and then i sealed all that in um so i mean there's always use for paper in different ways yeah Even, even if you're doing like a hanging sculpture where like certain paper is maybe semi-transparent or a little bit or less transparent or really hardcore. I imagine that this paper would be hardcore if it's used to protect tools. For sure. I mean, you've used like butcher block paper. Mm-hmm. Like some of the paper you used for the Orin project were like butcher block paper butcher and block, like restaurant menu vellum. paper, vellum. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you could always, if you have... If you have access, because a lot of the paper that I use is because I got access to a lot of it and I bought in Mm -hmm. bulk and I I will find a way to use it no matter what. Joy's Art said, hi, everyone. Also love the song. Thank you, Joy. Thank you, Joy. Naomi wants to know, how long would you message back and forth with an event coordinator? Big hippie fest and my art vibe lady not giving me a clear answer on a show and causing me to wait to schedule other smaller events. Hmm. I would let said art vibe lady know that, like, you need to schedule some other stuff and if she could, like, hook you up with some information sooner than later. I mean, Naomi, it would be really, really good at that point to ask some very direct questions that you know aren't like oh well you know da 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 be like you know i really need to schedule this and so i would need some exact dates and times and things like that Mm -hmm. um so if you're not getting the answers that you need if i don't get the answers that i need a lot of times i take a different approach in what questions i'm asking because you know we i i tend to when i'm talking to coordinators i'm like hey you know and stuff like that so you might you might need to be a little bit more direct and get a direct answer. And if you don't get a direct answer, then at that point, just, you know, you decide what to do. Okay, right. we have information on rosin paper, which is pronounced with a short O. Thank you, Sweetly Dark Art. Susan said, you mean the stuff that's used for construction? So I think one could find an art use for it or put it on the floor for protection. And then Sweetly also added, it's useful in a wide variety of construction applications, including roofing, flooring, 
as a oh. general job site protective covering. Now that I'm, I'm now I'm able to picture it. I'm pretty yes. sure. Yes, yes. I would absolutely use rosin paper for art. Rosin. Rosin. Short O. Rosin. Rosin. Stephanie said, when I was a kid, I wanted to travel the country and make jewelry. I wanted to be like Glee. <laughs> Sarah said, I had an eighth grade writing teacher tell me I need to be a writer, and my family living home, etc. teacher tell me the same. Then perhaps you should expand upon your writing. Yeah. Hi, Everett. Hey, Everett. Leas is like, it sounds like something I need to try. Everett, I am loving your t-shirt designs on, that I've been seeing online. Really, really, really cool designs. Yeah, Everett has some rad artwork. Yeah. Um, hi, Danita. I've been so absent from social activities lately. Just me, lol. But I will check your stuff out. ASAP. Oh, thank uh, you. Thank you, you guys Danita. Are... Anytime. Anytime. It'll be there. Yeah. Clee's been checking the stats on her song every morning. This is true. It is true. <laughs> the Artist Haven said, you can use rosin paper in art, but it does have some acid. Think pine. So you may want to use it with caution or with a good gesso. Oh, good to know. Or maybe, you know, if you use it, uh, th there are some pieces that I use that are not acid free that I know that they're going to yellow over time. And, you know, to me, that's like the design of the work is meant to age. Um yeah, I'm, I've am i never been very like, oh, archival, it needs to last and look like this forever. Like, there are certain pieces that I'm like, this is going to age really beautiful. It's going to patina. Yeah. It's going to patina yellow and ugly, and I love it. As long as you know your stuff, you know what your materials are going to behave like, so it's helpful to know that it's acidic, yeah. um, then you know that you can do this and maybe not that with it. Yeah. Free indeed. Love your fools. I fold my underwear song. I relate. Thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, Jacob said, yeah, rosin paper used for construction sites to protect floors from paint splatter. That's or what Or house it is. walls. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank I, you. Hi, Martin. Hey, Martin. Like felt paper. Uh, Christina it. said, I use masking tape. They usually make for masking wall paint and such to tape my papers to the drawing board. Mm -hmm. That stuff is useful. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I buy it. I, I try to buy masking tape in bulk when I can. Mm -hmm. Got French Market coming up in June. That's awesome, awesome. Sarah. Christina Tran. Hey, everyone. Is it Friday yet? Lol. <laughs> <laughs> Rosin paper felting? Possibly. Uh, maybe. I So I have found that if it's really fine fibers, sometimes it's tricky to use. Like I tried to needle felt with dryer lint one time because i heard you could do that and the fibers were just too fine to like want to create little dryer lint monsters yeah. yeah and i think there is a way to do it i just didn't when the fibers are real fine it can be a real pain so you may or may not be able to i'm not sure artifacts hello from puerto rico hello hi. ginger snaps hey ginger hi, ginger and hi phil and hi kirkman hi. and vivica from sweden Naomi is like, okay, direct is not rude. Got it, lol. Scared to offend. And the fest is my art vibe, so I really want in. She's not art vibe lady, Klee, lol. Oh, that's how I read it. I thought that's what it said. <laughs> yeah, direct is not rude. You know, you, you need the information. And, you know, that's one thing to remember. Being direct and asking questions, you have every single right to ask the questions. You are a business and you have to know your scheduling so to know ahead of time. So don't be afraid to be direct. A lot of times, I'll be honest with you, a lot of times people contact me and they're all wishy-washy about the information that they want. And I'm like, what do you want? And so, you know, and then it's, there's a back and forth. So just just be direct. It's Public great. service announcement. If you're going to be a show organizer and you're going to be dealing with artists like don't be vague or yeah, wishy-washy. Have it <laughs> dialed in. Yeah, Otherwise, so, don't step down and let yeah. someone else do it. We've dealt with like vague, wishy-washy show organizers, and it's like it's no point. Bueno. But also, uh, being a show organizer, and you know, I love artists. I am an artist, but I know for a fact that trying to organize a bunch of artists is like herding geese. It's it's just. You know, hurting cats, Tis. hurting turtles, snails. It's it's just it's a it's a challenge. So, being direct. You know, if they're not being direct, you be direct. It just makes your life a lot easier. A lot of times, I just that's how I approach shows and show organizers and let them know like this is the information I need. Thank you, thank you so much. You know, you could put the exclamation marks um, at the end of the message after you've made sure that you have your direct message in there. 
Mm-hmm. Izuby's like, roll only $20, so I bought. Oh, Great. yeah, Have that's fun. perfect. Experimenting. Thank you, Dilla. I've listened to the song. It's amazing. Ooh, I want to buy a roll. I know, right? Uh, I've listened to the song. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Um, let's see. Zara said I wanted to be like Klee making jewelry, but then I saw the ease of prints and digital, and this was a long, long while ago. 23 <laughs> vote, Emma! <laughs> Hannah's like, um, this question may be a bit silly. When there is a slight nick on the edge of a painting, can you repair it with gesso and paint over it? Um, usually I just paint over it, you know? Not I, even gesso? Yeah, I don't even gesso over it. I'll leave the, the, the mark in there, the imperfection, and I'll just paint over it with um uh well it depends on what medium you're using but that's what i'll paint over i'm sorry you guys i'm distracted because there's a beetle there is a beetle in here you you continue clover you... is enjoying a brownie while listening and setting up the cameo best times that's awesome clover leah said i've got needle felting tools so i'm willing to try and report back on lint monsters that's awesome leah if you uh if you have any success with it let me know, because I totally want to kind of revisit that and try it again in the future. Maybe wetting the, the lint would make the fibers more, like, applicable to sticking together. Hi, CJ. Oh, apparently the Beetle Saga is, like, for real, for real, because be Rafi has left the vicinity. Martin wants to know, any thoughts on AI art? Have you already made a video about this? So Rafi put a video out there about his thoughts on AI art, and then the heated debate got real, and then he decided he was going to take the video down, regather his thoughts, and probably talk about it I think I put again. It back. I think I ended up putting it back up. Did you? I was like, I don't care. So... I have a very, I have a very popular and unpopular dis, uh, opinion on AI art. Like, I don't, I get upset when I see people using it as an excuse to discon. You know, like a lot of the comments that I'll get is like, "Why would I even bother creating art if AI could create better art than me?" And I'm like, "What a effing lame excuse!" Like. So that's what a lot of the stuff I was getting, and I was getting a lot of like pseudoscience responses about what AI is. Basically, the idea <laughs> that a lot of people approach AI is like it's uh, like the Terminator movies, where it's sentient, where it is, it is artificial intelligence, where it's the equivalent to the human brain. It does brain. want to eradicate us, and, and I'm like, it is. It is a tool that people use. And unfortunately, like any other tool, you've got some assholes out there that are going to use it in a way that is not good, you know, that they're going to try to exploit um, the tool and the method of using it. As far as the legalities of it, that's the only place where I'm a little like, ah, OK, I get it. It's 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 kind of like a search engine that is like grabbing bits and pieces of things here and there. I think it's cool as a tool but also i think that it's too early there's no real regulation regulating it kind of stuff it's kind of a hot mess when right it, now when it comes to the copyright stuff which is expected because it's early in the game so i think all that stuff will just kind of fix itself but as far as like ai like i don't i just don't have i don't have a problem with it i it's a tool you know, like that's that's all it is. Like Clover says, it's a tool. I feel about AI how I feel about A1 sauce. It's okay. And it has some <laughs> uses, but it's not a replacement for a delightfully no. wondrous cut of meat. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, like it will never replace. Like, it, it drives me crazy because people are like, there are some people out there that follow um, some of these ec extremist AI, whatever. But when you... And, and they're, you know, it's all, it's all clickbait. It's like, oh, it's going to whatever. And it's ending this career and it's doing this and it's doing that. And it became really popular to do that. And so there's a lot of videos out there like that. But when you stop and you watch a video by a working artist and they're talking about AI, they'll tell you like, I don't know what direction this is heading, but really it's just a tool. Like, I'm not afraid of it. I, there's no reason to be afraid of it. Aang just got her order today uh, and obsessed with my new bracelet and calendar. Oh, thank you. Oh, awesome. thank you, Aang. 
Um, let's see. I'm confused. I thought this live stream was a private stream for members only. When do you do that one? The private streams are every other week. So last Wednesday and next Wednesday are our private Rogue community streams. But yes, this one is the so public. So we do, we do one public every every month and then we have our music live stream that we do on the band channel every month mm -hmm. and then the other two streams are the rogue community yep. hi wolf's rain hey uh thank, thank you for your words of encouragement to get yourself out there absolutely that's that's the you guys want to know the secret get your art out in front of as many people as possible for as long as you can and your people will find you and buy your art and secret like that's that's it there's no there's no it's just it's common sense get your artwork out there in front of people mm -hmm. as much as possible and i prefer not prefer always make sure that you do it in person as well um not just online there is something magical about face-to-face -face interaction that really allows you to connect with somebody much much quicker Nanu's like, did you see that Adobe is doing with it, trying to make it so it has identifying info embedded in it? Interesting. Oh, I did not know that. Hi, Chumpy. Hey, Chumpy. Do you use, I'm guessing that was meant to say felt on the walls. Yep. Do you use felt on the walls? On my art walls? No. Shade cloth. Shade cloth. Mm -hmm. Shade cloth. Look up, look up shade cloth. I think they come in several different colors. No, and then, then I use a hook that goes through the shade cloth. Yeah, felt is not strong enough to hold heavy paintings. We are building, oh, okay, I missed the first part. We're building your canvas walls straight from the awesome tutorial you put out there. How did you keep them from flying away? I zip tied them to the canopy. Mm -hmm. Zip ties, plenty hinges, of them. Hinges, hinges, zip ties. Listen, the reason, because a lot of people will ask me, how did you put your walls up? And I'm like, you gotta figure that out yourself. Like my setup was always flexible. I was able to, depending on what the wind speed was, what was going on, what direction things were. Our show setup is never the same, never the same. It all depended because, you know, sometimes you set up and there's a big dirt mound somewhere and you're like, I don't want to set up, you know, we're going to cover that with a table or we're going to mm -hmm. do this. So the walls are designed for you to be able to be flexible with them and move them around. Lint is to start fires, short fibers. <laughs> <laughs> True enough. Yeah. Um, you guys, if we miss your comment or your question, please feel free to copy and paste it so we see it again. And if we miss it again, please feel free to copy paste it again because the ticker tape gets moving. Uh, Ginger's like, also, no, they were trained by scraping the entire internet. Artists are being forced to compete with something which stole their IP. But Ginger said before that, if a person does not understand that the actual creation of art is an inherent and necessary part of the process, I have no interest in attempting to explain my stance. Yeah. Mm hmm I mean, that's the thing. Like, I, uh, the... There's a big difference between being like, oh, you know what, I'm a little bit concerned or whatever, and going total effing doomsday and i'm like i just i don't have time for that you guys there are plenty of other things that are going to cause artists to discourage themselves from following in our career this is one of those that just happens to be in the mainstream media right now and and like really popular as an excuse and i'm like i just i'm sorry that you feel that way but i don't have time i don't have time for that it's i'm not going to talk you off of the ledge if you're going to use artificial intelligence to like stop you from doing an, having an art career. It's like when everyone in the music industry lost their minds and thought it was the apocalypse when auto-tune was becoming a thing. And that's only because <laughs> they didn't know that they were already using auto-tune like in the 50s and 60s. Um, let's see. Connie, Brian says, if it's a good steak, you don't need A1. Exactly. That's exactly <laughs> what I was trying to get at. Yes. Did, well said, Brian. I think we might have missed uh, setting up Clover. my... Clover. The biggest issue with setting up my studio is how to store things, but not forget about them. Lo, do you have oh, any tips on... Yes. yes. Okay. So Clover, um, that's one of the reasons that all my shelves are open shelves where I could see all the paint and all the stuff, right? I'm mm -hmm. not a fan. I'm not even a fan of clear bins. I use clear bins, but I have less things. Yeah. So she uses clear bins. She knows exactly what's on there. And you, I label them with you, blue tape. And she labels them with blue tape. Me, on the other hand, I use open, open bins, something where, so I have my shelves and then I have open bins on the shelves or like, I'm sure you guys have seen in videos all the bear boxes, the paint boxes that are like I take from Home Depot whenever I pick up some house paint. 
Um, and I use that as long as things are open and accessible on the shelves. And the other thing that I do as well is sometimes I'll build, you know how some shelves are like this tall and then you have like this much stuff. I'll actually build out of wood additional shelves that I could like place things and fill in that space. But yeah, I, I make sure that I could see everything. Most definitely, because out of sight is out of mind. Naomi's like, no. And I'm realizing that she didn't mean felt. She did mean feet. Do you put feet on your walls? Naomi, I'm sorry that I'm having trouble interpreting today. <laughs> Do you put feet on your walls? Yes, I buy the little um, the little foot thingies with the pin thingies with the pin that like nails into the wood so i do put some feet on my walls actually my big walls have the metal um ball bearing wheels on it mm -hmm. and um, then the lighter ones have them just so feet. that because i'm lazy so i could like roll them to the place yeah yeah uh, Ang said, y'all are giving me the courage to put my stuff out there. It's scary as heck, but I appreciate the words of wisdom and encouragement. Awesome. Awesome. You've got this. Yes. Lucy said, our favorite uh, sushi chef taught us, don't buy sushi on special if it's covered with sauce. <laughs> That's good advice. <laughs> Artist Haven said, Google just had, it went away. Did it? Yeah. Oh, it really went away. Uh, to... Okay, Google just had a long live stream about their AI. I caught most of it before the RK private stream. Some really good stuff coming with security and metadata embeds. Cool. Cool, cool. Um, someone said that they're not worried unless AI goes Skynet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'm in full That's, agreement. I, I am in full agreement And there. I think Jesse said, I don't care if AI takes my job. More time to do the things I want. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, AI doesn't need the money, so you could make an agreement with AI like, you do the job and just send me the paycheck. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm at. Chumpy's like, and duct tape. <laughs> you could really apply that to anything we've been yeah. discussing. Yeah. W walls, studio bins, duct tape. Just have some. <laughs> Always have some. I love some. Ginger's like, every problem can be solved with enough zip ties. Mm -hmm. Show festivals, that is a must. Always have zip ties. Have We would buy the big, long thing of zip ties, and anytime there was a show, whenever the winds got really bad, I could tell you right now, rope and zip ties came in absolutely handy. And if you want a more reusable solution, bungee cords will do you right also, the short ones. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, zip ties. They even make like reusable zip ties, I'm pretty sure. Uh, things to look for or beware of in looking for a printmaker. So somebody to print your prints? Who asked that question? Lucy. Lucy. Um, so is it like a printmaker, like somebody to print your prints? Or the the device itself, like a, like a pressure printmaker? Yeah. Let us know. Let us know. Do you have a video on how to build a rotatable easel? If I remember correctly, you built one, didn't you? I have a video where I repaired my rotatable easel and I show you where I installed the Lazy Susan and stuff. So th there's one video out there where I have that. Um, my plan is for this new studio, I want to build a few. I actually want to build a, because my easel you could collapse and take to shows, but it's still a behemoth. It's a big one. So... I want to build one that is collapsible that I could take out and do shows without it being like this thing that takes up half the room in our car. Mm -hmm. So I'll be I'll be filming myself doing that, but that will probably happen in a few months. Um, right now, I've got other projects that I'm working on. Uh, scroll it up just a hair. Okay. What do you do if you ever encounter and experience severe painter's block? Like you have plenty of vague ideas, but no idea what to do. Uh, Donita, I just get started on something. Even if it means that I'm putting paint to canvas um, with no direction in mind, the only way to get out of that stuck place is to get, think of it like momentum, right? Like you're stuck in the mud, right? You could sit there and plan all you want, but you're just gonna slowly sink in the mud. So you got to you got to take that that initiative to get something started, even though you don't know which direction or how exactly you're going to get out of it. Just as long as you're heading in a direction and get that momentum going again. Kelly, as for AI, I use it as a tool to throw an idea together to see what it may look what, before wasting paint. Yeah, yeah that's, it can that's certainly what a lot of people do. I mean, I, a lot of times when I'm working on a commission, I might take a picture 
of the, or not even a commission, something that I'm working on. I might take a picture when I'm not sure what I'm going to do with something and I'll mess around with elements of it in Photoshop before I put paint to canvas. Um, so same thing. It's just, you know, I don't know. Chumpy. It, Nothing to worry about from AI till it's able to make tree puns. Then we're in trouble. Oh, yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Scroll it up just a hair. Serenity wants to know, because I have a vision disability and I can't drive to do art fest shows, what do you suggest if I want to get in-person show exposure? Could you possibly partner with somebody where you can, like, conquer it together? Like, they can tackle the driving and you guys can help each other, like, with setup and just, honestly, it's good to have two people at a show anyway. Yeah. Um, In case somebody has to use the bathroom or something or somebody needs to walk away or go get food or whatever the case is. mm -hmm. A lot of times, especially for, you know, for, for any kind of show, it's just so much easier if you're set up with someone else. Um if you do not have somebody that you know uh that to do a show i know that a lot of times like uh co-op galleries or like artist associations art councils things like that if you contact them and let them know what your situation is then maybe they'll pair you up with someone um but yeah that that would be the best the best thing i would recommend is to take someone with you Mm -hmm. Um, Lucy said, yes, exactly. Someone to do it for so a printer, like to go to a printer um, to do it for her. Okay, so. All right. So I have a thing with printers, right? So when I was in Pensacola, my gallery, um, uh, Marty Campbell Gallery was who did the prints for me. And the reason was because I trusted him and he just, he, you know, he was very straightforward with it. You're going to hear a lot of lingo in the art world when it comes to gicle and like different things like that. And a lot of times, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, those the the prints are they're overcharging for them because they know that artists are going to go to them to get these things because there's this reputation involved when in actuality you're just dealing with archival um, inks and dyes and, you know, different things like that that are not that much more expensive than a lot of the other stuff. What I recommend is uh, just talking to artists. There's a lot of artists in the rogue community that when I got my recent printer, um, I basically just put out a question like, what kind of printer um, do you use for your prints? And I started to get to, I realized that in the long run, I was going to save a lot more money on my prints and be able to have a variety of sizes and stuff without it being this thing that I had to like get up front every single time. So, um, yeah, my biggest recommendation is to find a printer that works for you for the sizes that you want to do. Um, I also like the eco tanks because I hate buying ink cartridges. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you you just gotta find what's best for you, and the best the best way to do that is to talk to artists that you know. There's a, plenty of us out there that print our own prints out. And if you're looking to do like super large format, and you need to go to a printer, I only have one red flag when it comes to printing. If they can't give you like rates based on size straight up front, then they're adjusting their rates. Yeah. Based on the customer. And that is no go for me. Like if they don't have a standard rate that they can tell you what it is, like then it's a red flag. The best thing too is to talk to um, the artists that are in your area and see which local printer they use and, you know, get the recommendation from them as far as pricing, as far as whether or not they trust them. Yeah. There's a lot of, there's a lot of scammy printers out there. So as long, but there's a lot of good ones too. So up to you to decide how it is that you would approach it. Aang is like, I could be wrong, but I've heard Redbubble's fees have gotten crazy. Do you still use them? What's your opinion on that whole thing? So I have a little Redbubble store, but I don't honestly pay attention to it. And Rafi has some Redbubble products. I put Redbubble products in my store like years ago. Yeah. And I think... I, I've checked it maybe like once in the last five years and I've sold stuff yeah, here, here and there, there on Redbubble. But like I just the profit margin in Redbubble is just 
complete bullshit. Yeah, and now they're like doing their whole membership tier thing. And um so to be honest, like the, our main POD that we use is Printful. Yeah, with, and like with anything our else is secondary. We also use Spring, formerly Teespring, but uh, we rely on Printful. Yeah, Spring uh, I don't know if I'd recommend them anymore. A lot has changed. They got bought out by somebody, so I don't know. Their processing times I, have gotten stupid. Yeah, just like gonna 2 say months that. for a t-shirt, which is bullshit. Um let's see Clover said, I just find which print makers others, others recommend. recommend. Yeah, exactly. Word of mouth or for online. Yeah. Isabee's like, no, make 13 more variations. <laughs> Christina's <laughs> like, that's cool. I can wait for the easel vid. I'm just glad I see one getting built. Maybe I can make one myself. Absolutely. Actually, some of the rogues have already built their own easels. Um, and it's really cool because their designs are so good. My easel I built out of scrap wood in our yard. So... Um, definitely with the next one, it's going to be, there's going to be improvements to it. Okay. Our ticker tape, uh, jumped a lot. So we might've missed a bunch of your questions, but I know that Christina wanted to know, like, what's your opinion on artists who refer to themselves as pro artists? <laughs> I think a lot of artists will refer to themselves as pro. It depends. Like you could call yourself a pro artist. All pro means is professional, right? So this is what I do for a living. So I would be considered a professional artist. Um, then some artists call themselves pro because it's like, a, you know, I'm here. I'm a professional. I'm this and this. And they, they use it to um, give themselves an air of su superiority. Uh, I, I treat people differently when it comes to that, you could always tell when somebody, you know, and, and honestly, if it comes down to that, if somebody's calling themselves a pro because it makes them feel better about themselves, then great. But if it's based on insecurity and causes them to be a big fat a-hole, then, you know, I'll be like, I don't give a shit what you are. Use your labels for good. Yeah. Does Printful fold their underwear? Nostalgic Inclination wants to know. I'm sure yes, they do. Yeah. They do. Yeah. They do. <laughs> That's super helpful, guys. Thanks, said Lucy. Uh, Ginger says, uh, Christina, uh, Stefan Bauman says, it's really not that sexy. Often people leave you alone. Wide-rimmed hats and sunglasses are a plus. Also, haters going to hate. Don't ever let that stop you. Yeah. I've used Printful for years, said Clover. Printify also good. I started with Printify, and then I ended up going with Printful um, just because at the moment that I started with Printify, they ran into some issues, and I was like, I don't have time for this. <laughs> so I love Printful, but Printify is pretty good, yeah. There is like, pro means you got paid. Yes, it can mean that. I mean, we're like, this is what it you can. do for a living. It can. Unfortunately, you know, the, the term pro always sounds like it means something other than just a professional. Like, that's all it is. I'm a professional. And honestly, professional is kind of boring. Like, I'm a professional. I'm, I, for me, I'm like, I'm an amateur. Like, I'm constantly experimenting and playing around and doing new things and pushing outside of my comfort zone. I may be a pro at certain things, but, like, after a while, you find those things boring and you start – you have to evolve. You have to move and grow into – an area that you don't know. Ginger's like, I'm a professional mess maker. That counts. That does count. Christina's wanting to know when someone calls themselves a pro artist, it sometimes sounds like they're just doing it to bolster their image, to tell others the right way to do stuff. Not in every case, but sometimes. 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 <laughs> and that's that's what it is. It's like you want to play it by a case-by-case -case basis. Because I would, in some situations, call myself a professional artist. If I was talking to somebody that, especially if I'm talking to somebody that's like, what do you do for a living? I'm you know, they come from that mentality. It's easier for me to just tell them, I'm a professional artist. This is what I do for a living. You know, like Clover says, I'm a professional artist. It's, it's my what main, I do. It's my main income. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Karen wants to know, I don't have a lot of experience with art prints. What do you think people prefer for prints? Photo paper, card stock, like paper or presentation paper? Card stock's kind of the go-to, is it not? I mean, it definitely depends on what your work is like and what suits your work best because we know people that will only do prints on aluminum or yeah. will only do prints on such and such. So I think whatever suits your work, but honestly, cardstock is pretty much the like the go-to. Yeah. Um, I mean, cardstock, photo paper, a lot of artists use photo paper for their prints. Sure. Um, so really it's up to you, up to like what... A, you know, like I'll I'll probably be printing up some prints on photo paper because I got a great deal from Canon where I got a bunch of 
cases of photo paper for free. So I'm like, yeah, you know, so I'm going to have prints of my work on photo paper in eight by 10 and in four by six in the for future, sure. in the future here. Cause it's, you know, you've got it. If you get a good deal on it, I'm like, fuck yeah. And like, you also like this. It's like a water. It's supposed to be or like a mixed media art paper that you do some of the. You were doing some of the smaller, the Strathmore like oh, textured. Oh, the, Strath, the Strathmore It's textured. like a cardstock, but with like texture. Yeah, it's got texture <laughs> on it. So Strathmore makes a, makes a, a jet, a printer, jet, jet printer. What? Inkjet. Inkjet. Inkjet printer paper that has texture on it. Hi, Fire King. Fire King's like, I don't call, I call myself an amateur. I have so much to learn. <laughs> Professional amateur, said Lucy. I said Lucy. Christina's like reposting. So you see what Ginger responded to uh, was, do you have any advice on drawing in public places where people can just come up to you and roast you to bits while you're working on your stuff? Oh. That makes more sense. You know um, what? Just uh, people, A, people are not going to come up and roast you. And if they do, um, they could eat a bag. That's basically what it comes to. That's the reason that I don't, I actually, from doing a lot of live painting stuff, um, I would get invited to events and do live painting at like festivals and things like that. Um, I remember the first time, the first few times I did it, I was terrified that people were going to come up. First off, people are going to be very nice. Um, you're going to get the occasional idiot that's there. And it's not even about the art or you. They're just there. They're like impressing their friends, you know, trying to be funny in front of their, oh, so what's yeah. that supposed to be? Ha, ha, ha. You know, and like Look, stuff like boobs. that. Look, it's boobs. Look, it's boobs. I'm like, oh, is this the first time you're seeing them? Wow. You know, like, so you, you just, it's good to get out there. I wouldn't be worried about being roasted because honestly, the more that it, it if it does happen, you get to a place where you just kind of realize like that person's an idiot and I just don't care, you know? Um, and their motivation never has anything to do with your art. So um, being able to take a roast and like switch it back. Oh, Throw it back to Oh, that feels mm -hmm. so good. Naomi wants to know, printing my art on my own has been hell and I'm worried that my prints are imperfect, like bordered different here and there, labeled eight by 10 when maybe they're just a hair off. Newbie, do you find people forgiving? People don't care. They don't know and they, <laughs> they, don't, don't, care. they don't care. Unless it's like really like. Yeah. The... If you're like, this is an eight by 10 and it's actually like a four by six, then, you know, that's. Or that's like whatever. you have one border that's this thick and the other one is but like if, that. <laughs> but if you're off by like a millimeter or two and you're like, oh, it's not really, it's, it's off by half an inch. People just, it will be okay. they don't care. They yeah. don't care. Definitely. And by the way, we've seen your stuff. It's beautiful and amazing and perfect. So yeah, don't Agreed. don't worry about that. Nanny's like, I guess I pitched the vinyl cutter idea to well, one of the guys decided to do it himself. Oh well, I don't have to mess with it now. <laughs> the universe took over for you. Clover said I use photo paper because I use such vibrant colors. Yeah. I want them to pop, but it's whatever you like. Your photo paper on. does really well with the vibrant colors. The reason my prints do well with the vibrant colors is because I cover the print with the acrylic medium mm -hmm. so it brings out those colors but um if you want to just have a print without doing all the extra shit that i do to mine um then yeah printing on photo paper is good because it really brings out those vibrant colors metallic paper too yeah metallic paper is rad stuff also nanu i'm sorry if that was if that's a disappointing situation but you have a lot of creative projects going on. You so do, maybe, Nano. Yeah. Uh, there, there's no shortage. Canvas Pop is a great printer company. For my Gicle prints in Canvas, they will reprint for free if it's not done how you wanted the first time. That's nice. That's really nice. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. You know, you can call me whatever you want. I'm just going to keep making my mess over here, said Ginger. Yep. Fire King said, so glad I joined this and knew of it sooner. I'm trying to upload like 12 videos at once. <laughs> I'm glad you're here, Fire King. Thank glad you for you're being here. here. They can eat a bag. Even funnier when you don't finish the sentence, <laughs> said Lucy. <laughs> Artists roasting each other would be a funny event, said Fire King. That would be. That would be. Do you have any advice on pushing your art farther? We just today recorded a podcast called leveling up in your art career mm -hmm. and it kind of talks all about that yeah and that's gonna go that's actually gonna go live next week on our podcast channel one of the many channels that we have mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but you know as far as pushing your art farther um 
you're going to get to a place where there's something that you're thinking about doing and you're going to be afraid of doing it. Pushing your art farther is doing that thing that you're afraid of doing. It's going to take you on that journey. And don't let your excuses, be they financial or emotional or technical, stop you from taking steps towards. Exactly. Christina said, I just get so stressed doing stuff live. I can barely focus. Look, it's boobs. Just makes me want to draw them in public more. Yep. I'm going to go out and plain air only boobs. I, that's what I was thinking. Like, you know, like you're sitting there, you're staring at a tree or a vista and it's just like a tree with boobs. Like just basically, like, oh. I remember, I remember somebody like I had, I had artwork at uh, one of the stores and somebody came in. It's like, well, it's not that I don't like boobs. I just don't like nipples. And I decided I was just going to put nipples on everything that I created. Like starfish yeah, and starfish, wine glasses. Wine glasses, everything, everything was going to have. Yeah. Uh, Diane's like, question for Clee. Do you ever have people come up to your booth and take photos of your jewelry? How do you handle them? I had this happen once or twice. My attitude made an appearance all the time, Diane. Some of them announce to me what they're doing, like, or ask permission, like, can I take a picture of this so I can show so-and-so and they can tell me if they want it? And I'm like, yeah. Well, uh, on a handful of occasions, I actually had people say, I'm photographing this so that I can go home and try to make it. And I said, cool, because in my head, I was like, good luck. Good luck. <laughs> because it took me effing forever to figure out how to make it the way I do. And the struggle is real. And so if they want to put forth the effort to make it as well, then so be it. Yeah. It's not going to look like mine. Because it's going to be theirs. And that's the thing. And so it really doesn't, it doesn't get to me. It doesn't get to me either. I had artists come in and like take pictures. And I was like, all right, well, what are you going to do with it? Like, where are you going to sell it? Everybody knows that these are my trees. Yeah. You know, and I've literally had artists that other people come in and say like, that person down there is trying to sell your trees. I'm like, good luck. And I mean, just, if it inspired them to get started, then it I'm all for it. Because like, that's not all that I do. Right. You know, it's not like you create this thing and that's it. That's your thing. And you're just going to keep moving. And you're the innovator, the one that made it up. So this person is always going to be dragging ass behind you. Yeah. I had a girl uh, sheepishly tell me at a show that she was inspired by my work. And what she meant was like she was, her pieces looked very similar to mine. And I was happy for her. And when I think about it, like, I put such detailed pictures of my jewelry on our website that, like, it's practically a how-to. Yeah. Um, so I got to be okay with other people making stuff in the same realm as me. I'm going to keep doing what I do. Think about it this way. You're either looking forward or you're constantly on edge trying to yeah. protect, you know, it's like just just keep innovating, keep creating, keep doing your thing. Um, because honestly, it's not the design of the work. I mean, her designs are beautiful, but it's how many times we put ourselves out there and kept putting ourselves out there and showing it in front of people that made people familiar with her. Somebody's not going to be able to just create her stuff, something similar to hers and be like, oh, now I get to sell all this stuff. Like it doesn't work that way. People buy the art that I create or the jewelry that Klee creates because we created it. Yeah. And you can never replicate someone's aesthetic, even if you're making similar work. By the way, you guys, the ticker tape is moving really quick. So if we miss your question, because there were some good questions and, you know, we tend to answer very longly oh here we, we're okay uh jacob wants to know do you have any brushes you would recommend for acrylics i just got some as a gift and haven't used them before uh rafi uses like whatever all... i could get my hands on some of them are really <laughs> manky like yeah. some of them i don't throw away and they're so disgusting because i like the very unique pattern that the brush makes um but i i can't think of any names to be honest with you i know what a lot of them look like and I order them from Blick. Uh, Serenity said, do you think it's necessary to do art fests to get known? Not necessarily. Not necessarily, but it will freaking help. And it'll speed in things up a bit. The more, um, and not necessarily art fests, like art markets, art walks, little things that you're doing here and there, um, showing your art, doing, you know, talking to a local business and maybe setting up a little art show in there. Um, and doing stuff. The fact of the matter is the more that you show your art in person, right? The more it helps you to really let people know that you exist. 
That's that's the reality of it. There's there's no other way around it. You know, sharing your stuff on social media is great and stuff like that, but like that doesn't give that one-on-one connection until somebody decides that they're going to investigate the artwork a little bit deeper. When you're meeting somebody in person, that connection can happen really really quickly. Ginger's like good luck. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> Phil wanted to know when you're listing an art print like do you list the dimensions of the paper border or do you list the dimension of the work itself? So right, right now the art prints that I have so it depends. If it's paper um just paper then I will list the dimensions of the artwork itself. So it's an 8 by 10 um, because, you know, they'll be able to buy a frame that's 8x10 or the, the mat is 8x10. So the the art will be the dimension. My artist enhanced prints that I mount on wood, I give the dimensions of the whole piece, the wood, right? So I don't count just a, you know, it'll be the, the little print in the middle and then the wood. So it's the whole thing that I give the dimensions for. So that's the way I think about it when I'm doing prints. It's the actual artwork itself. Those are the dimensions, right? Not the paper. The paper is kind of extra. That's where you could get away with like leaving a like a big edge or something like that. Um, that's why like all of mine, the prints are eight by 10, like when I do prints and the paper is usually like all different sizes depending on what it needs to be. What, what, what it's paper be. I have, yeah. Uh, oh, thank you, thank Tina. Thank you, Tina. Tina says, I miss and love you guys. Aww. We love you too. Alicia's like, hello, I'm on my way somewhere now, but I saw you live and wanted to say hello. Oh, hi, hi, Alicia. Alicia. Um, Freddie said, advice on first ever art walk event as vendor for my paintings. Have fun. That's the best advice, and it might sound cheesy, but it really is. Have fun. Talk to people. Don't be there to sell your art. Your art's going to sell itself. Be there to meet people and have the conversation about your art. Form those connections. Have those conversations. Leave people with, you know, the thought that like, man, this Freddy guy is fucking cool. Yeah, I want to check out his website or his socials. Yeah. Definitely. So just And just have fun. Take the edge off. You don't have to impress anybody. You don't have to be all like professional. Just have fun. Show off your art. Have great conversation. Art inspires all kinds of conversation. Have fun with it. And bring a towel because they come in handy. Yeah, they do. And stay hydrated. And stay hydrated. And locate the bathroom facilities before the show kicks off. Yes. (laughs) And have something to anchor your canopy with in case it gets super windy. Michelle said, thank you guys. I have to go very late. Bye, Michelle. Bye, Michelle. Late in the UK. Serenity Uh, said, Luna, I'm an expert on Seinfeld. (laughs) <laughs> there was a nips conversation there. Uh, boo, I missed most of it. It's okay, Rachel. We know you were painting today. Yeah. Uh, do you finger paint? I've done one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I, I would say that about 30% of my paintings, a vast majority of it is finger painting. I use brushes, my fingers, um, toothpicks, sticks, uh, things that used to be brushes that are all like, you know, hardened because I left the acrylic on there. Then they become something new. Whatever I can use to make something do what I want it to do is what I use. So yeah, finger painting, big fan, big fan. Lucy's like seven kids. I know where all the bathrooms are, (laughs) (laughs) right? Because when the time comes, you can't fuck around. Fire King, you (laughs) order from Blick, Rafi? I got some great stuff. Yes, Blick is my go-to. For art supplies. Mm -hmm. Because A, I order in bulk to save money. And B, anytime that there's been an issue with my order, Blix, customer service, they are just, I love Blix. I can't. I can't say enough of Blake. In fact, I'm super stoked that they're actually commenting on our videos. I know. How cool. I'm like, oh, shit. Blake's commenting on our videos. That's awesome. Christina said, I once was drawing a guy in a skimpy bunny outfit and heels in public from a pic on my phone. And I kind of wish someone came up to me to start crap, <laughs> see be... my art and just leave. That would have been funny. I think that's awesome. <laughs> that I is awesome. That. Uh, as a side <laughs> note, is it weird that that imagery makes me think of Nanu? <laughs> <laughs> Shout no. out to you, Nanu. Shout out to Nanu. Uh, things that used to be brushes. Relatable, said yeah. Ginger. Question, Rafi and Klee, do you think works on paper are less valuable? I'm a watercolorist. No, no. I don't think so. No. 
at all. No, and that's something that I struggled with for a while. Um, I've created a lot of works on paper that I never showed anybody. They go into like a bin, like I do something and put it away. And I really love them. And for whatever reason in my brain, I have disconnect going on there. And honestly, that's all it is, is perception. The person that is buying the art, they don't give a shit. As long as they love the art, paper, canvas, wood, uh, old cabinet doors, you know, the back of a piece of rug, whatever it is that you create mm -hmm. something on and they love it, it's, you know, the, the value is there. Naomi's like, I haven't varnished any originals, some oil, some acrylic. I want to get out in June. How long do I have till I'm screwed? I think I already am with the oils, right? You can push it right down to the wire with the acrylics. I'm talking like 48 hours, 24 hours if yeah. you want to live sometimes dangerously. I, sometimes I would varnish my pieces the day of. <laughs> or the night before. I'm and like, then, six yeah. hours, six hours. Um, yeah, you can really get away with it. But with the oils, I don't know. Oh, uh, that's going to take a while. Yeah, yeah. It's going to take a while. <laughs> I would do it. Just do it and see where you're at. Even if they, you know, just see where you're at. Maybe maybe it'll dry. Maybe get a dehumidifier mm -hmm. and speed up the process. Mm -hmm. Nostalgic is like, do you usually stretch your own canvas or go with pre-stretched? When Okay, so I order from Blake and I order in bulk. So anything that is larger than a 30 by 30 inch, I stretch because... I'm not going to I'm not going to pay extra shipping and the prices at a lot of the retail stores is just bullshit when it comes to whatever. I just stretch my own canvas. Um when it's bigger, but 30 by 30 I could order uh like 20 of them in bulk and get a pretty good price. I think it's like 8 to ten dollars a piece or something like mm -hmm. that you know. jesse's like angle for sponsorship <clears throat> oh from blick we wouldn't hate it if they wanted to Just oh putting yeah. that out there <laughs> <laughs> that's how i found out about local art events i think i must have missed the beginning part of that um how do you know it was not me said nanu i suppose we don't know I, that i it guess was it, not maybe you. it was you even local community festivals can be a good start, said LSJ. Yes, yes. I, I, I mean, and that's the thing. Like, we started our career. You guys, seriously, and I've said this many times, do not, do not just out of, the, uh, just from the get-go, sign up for these $500,000 art festivals. That is not a smart business move. Mm -hmm. There are going to be plenty of shows. You just have to look for them, right? They're not going to be the ones that advertise and all that shit. There's going to be art walks. Look into your look at your events calendars for the areas that you live in and the surrounding small towns. Look for arts council calendars. Look for art walks. Type in art walk into your Google calendar with the city name or the town name or something like that and just look for events and visit those events. A lot of them are like monthly. They'll do like first Fridays of the month or whatever. Go to the event, talk and see who the event coordinators are and get into those events. Usually those are like anywhere between 25 to $50 to do, right? So, and you get just as much exposure at a small event than you do at these big expensive art shows. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Christina's like toothbrushes have some nice uses as brushes. I was also thinking of making a brush out of my hair. Ooh, I think that would be cool. I like that. That would be cool. What do you do when your cat sneezes on your graphite drawing? Lol. I guess you incorporate it into the work. Into the story. And the story. So this amazing mark, this is a collaboration between me and my cat. Mm hmm. <laughs> Have you ever been blocked after a big success? I had a Kickstarter funded for my first comic two years ago, and I haven't created anything new since. I'm terrified to put work out there, said we, Jamie. Our last video was about, about that. About that. We, it's post not our, not our not our Monday motivation, but last week. Postartum. Postartum. <laughs> you just got to push through it. You just yeah. got to push through it. The whole idea that you created your best work, that's great, right? But it's also a big old pile of crap. Like, you've got a lot more work in you. And it's easy to be like, I'm never going to create anything this good. And it's like, just move on and, and get started on your next piece. Jamie, if you haven't seen that video, I highly recommend. I think you might enjoy it. I'm struggling with the song right now after the Fool's uh, release and I'm so happy with that song. I'm wrangling with a song that obviously doesn't sound as good right now because it's new. And having to push through that and like like all the emotions that come with it. 
Jenny said, yes, I'm a painter and illustrator, but the bulk of my sales during COVID were, we're on, on paper. paper. Yeah. Oils do take a while to dry. People are chiming in. But Dana said something. Let me see. And I might have, we might have missed it. Dana, where's Dana? Nope, it's, nope, you're going too far. Nope. Dana said something about putting it in her car, like she would varnish and put stuff in her car. Oh, yeah. To dry. Gamvar. Gamvar yeah. varnish for oils when dry to the touch and sometimes dry my oil paintings in a, in hot, a hot car. car. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, a nice hot car. Um, that is good. Dehumidifier too is something that I, that mm -hmm. I do recommend, but a hot car, that's brilliant. Yeah, definitely. Hi, blue penguins. Hey, blue penguins. Hey, Rafi and Klee never joined a live stream before. Just wanted to say hey and love the new song and watching your channel for a few years now. Love both of you. Uh, thank, thank you so much for all of that, for supporting our channel and liking our song and being here with us. That's Somebody awesome. Somebody asked if we were going to be in Philly. Um, oh, that's on yeah. our bucket list. I don't know that we're going to get there this year, but we will probably be visiting. Um, Hopefully in 2024. Yeah. Um, we're trying to get our stuff caught up this year. Yeah, we're still, guys, we're still in the process of getting our shit together here after this move and all the craziness that's been going on. What's the best store to get metal grid to hang art at events? Okay, first of all, KR, we don't recommend getting metal grids for shows unless you don't mind hauling them and lifting them and carrying them all the time and being K exhausted because they are very heavy. That's why I built my own walls. My walls are made with shade cloth, a wooden frame. There's a video on here. If you look up how I DIY or DIY festival walls, I have a video on there that will show how to do it. I've seen artists take metal grid out to stuff and that is just... It's so much fuck work. my life. Now, like, it's, it's hard enough to set up for a show, let alone... It's great. They're heavy duty, but I don't know. It's just not worth it to me. Like the amount of shows that we did, because we were doing lots of shows, like every weekend we had one to three shows that we were doing. If we were hauling those out, I don't think we, we would have done No, it. we wouldn't have done that many shows. That said, we're just trying to um, give you a heads up, not discourage you. If yeah. you decide that that's what you want to go with, most certainly go with it. I'm not sure where the best place to get them is, though. If anybody knows that, throw it in the ticker tape for sure. But yeah, if you're going to do a lot of shows frequently, maybe consider. Yeah, I'm sorry. A I, I didn't option. mean to like rain on your parade. It's just those metal grid walls, man. I am not. I, I'm they're just so not, hard. They're so it's so much work, <laughs> and you can't like you. They're really difficult to transport. Any event that have people gather, see if you can bring related. Yes, work. yes, or even not related work, sir. I, Zara, like I, I would take out my work to a show, and I'd just be there with my art. And the thing is that people are fascinated by artists, so they're gonna come by and look at the stuff and talk to you. Um, you know, unless it's very like if you're doing like a. Barktoberfest, and you show up with like you know wine bottles and boobs and, and boobs. I don't know. I don't <laughs> I'm know. I'm serious. I'm gonna plan air some boobs this summer. We should. And people will be like, "Oh, are you drawing should, the hillside?" Should, and I'll be like, "We should mm -hmm. do the plain air for the show that they do the exhibition." And so everybody's will be like this vista, and All yours my will just rolling be... hills of boobs. <laughs> <laughs> If you if I have artwork with paw prints, it usually says Dexter helped next to it. Oh, I, love <laughs> it. I just love it. Dr. Uh, Mix Recordings wants to know, did you have your song copyrighted? No, I am choosing to live dangerously, but there are lots of um I have lots of proof of its existence and when it came into existence. And I know that that's definitely not the same thing as having a copyright. I am considering a copyright for fools, but yeah. I have not done it with any song in the past. Our distributor actually makes it pretty easy to do copyright. So it is something I'm looking into for sure. Yeah. Now I, I've copywritten all my books. Yes. So all the books are copywritten. Books so you should absolutely. I do recommend that you copyright the songs. I think it's a good idea. 
I think it's a good idea to do so. I just have not done it yet. New England's Clee, I love how you're more front and center in your new studio and not just yelling from the background. (laughs) Thank you so much. And I love you guys. Some of you guys are um, excited that I'm front and center. Some of you guys have expressed that you miss the days when I was in the back peanut gallery. And we've kind of got a mix of both going now. Right now, with the setup of the new studio, it's... There's going to be there's going to be both. She's going to be in the background blurry in some of the videos and then, you know, front and center in some. And yeah, it's just, you know, she's she's way less shy and than I, she was, which is awesome. I am super genuinely um, thankful that you guys have embraced all the Klee appearances, whether they are front and center or background noise. <laughs> the artist, David, who needs Planet Fitness when, when you, you can haul, haul those grid, grid panels. panels? What do you recommend? Like I said, I built I built my own walls. Exterior shade cloth, like the kind they sell in the garden center at hardware stores. It's super strong. And Rafi's got a video where he puts together shade cloth walls. And they're like... And they're so light. They're lightweight they're and so awesome. so light and heavy duty. You know. Chris is like, I did one show with Metal Grids, sold them immediately after. <laughs> They're a pain, and I nearly broke my wrist on one of them. Yeah, yeah, they are. They're they're a challenge. They're a challenge. Clover's like, I get the metal ones with the plastic middles. I can display stickers, and they easily come off and on. They are much lighter. I didn't know they made ones. Oh, with the plastic, plastic middles. middles. That's pretty good. Hey, that's a good compromise, right? Do you guys deal with thieves taking your art at your stands? Only one time. Only one time. And I have really? a feeling. Yeah, I have a feeling a kid grabbed one of my cuff bracelets. Oh. And honestly, I had to take responsibility of it because I was being negligent at the moment that my cuff bracelet walked off. I wasn't being, I wasn't doing a good job looking over my stuff. Yep. That's another reason that it's good to have two people, if you can, in your booth or have neighbors that can look over your stuff when you have to go use the bathroom or get whatever. Yeah. But for the most part, no, I mean, in the decade that we did shows, I had one thing go missing. Yeah, I've I've never had any art taken. Yeah. Yeah. So I count that as, you know, pretty good, and I feel pretty fortunate in that regard, especially with jewelry. Um, So Rennie said, how often do you guys, Clean Rafi, do art festivals still? We're doing one this Saturday. (laughs) We're doing one this Saturday. And then next week, we are doing a workshop. A series of workshops. We're doing a series of workshops for artists. Um, Last year, we did our, we had a two month long exhibition and we did Fam Jam. And I think we did one other show. Yeah. They've definitely been more sporadic as we've gotten moved and gotten settled in. But we are ready to hit the show circuit again. But I think, honestly, like for us right now, with everything we we're got going on. We're definitely not going to be doing, you know, in the yeah. beginning we did a lot because we we're getting our footing and like really establishing ourselves. And then uh, for the first four or five years, we were doing one to three shows. Now, that's a lot. That's a lot, you guys. That's a lot. That's Monday through Thursday working on art and then doing shows. Monday through Thursday working yeah. on art doing shows. That's a lot. Um, so we're at a place now where it's like we want that balance, you know, and we're very picky of the shows that we do. So like maybe one show a month during the nice seasons or yeah. once every couple of months. Blue runs like it's outrageous that Americans have to pay to copyright their stuff. In Australia, copyright is automatic and implicit and artists are automatically protected. Australia is looking good this time yep, of the century. It sure is. <laughs> Teresa said, are you doing Fam Fest this week? Yeah, we're doing yeah. Fam. We'll be a Fam Jam painting. I'll be painting and Klee will be creating I'll be jewelry. jewelrying. Yeah. Puppets. Needs more puppets. We do need more puffet. Pu- uh, puffets. Christina puppets. said, all Klee is good Klee. Oh, thank you. Can't speak for anyone else, said Lucy, but you're my very favorite Klee ever, ever. <laughs> thank you, Lucy. <laughs> I'm up against some serious competition for Klee's. There's a dog breed that's cute called Klee, and there's a famous artist called Klee, so I... I take that as a huge Christina compliment. Christina said, if everything goes well, I'm going to have my first art exhibition soon. I'm both excited, terrified, and I think I reached the stage of no longer feeling the fear of death. <laughs> Good job. Good, Good job. job. Proud of you. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's a big step, man. That's a big step. And it's the beginning of a really amazing journey of getting out there. Just remember... Focus on anything other than making money. That's going to be rough because there's going to be a lot of artists there and you're going to see people come up to you. It's like, how's it going today? And what they mean is like, are you making money? Is it a good day or a bad day? And that's what they base. Unfortunately, that's just the mentality out there. 
go beyond that. Klee and I always had fun, whether we were making money or not. And there was something that just connected with people with that people would always come to our booth because we were having fun. Whereas other people that maybe weren't selling during the day were just sitting there with their arms crossed, upset and feeling like they failed. And it's like that energy is going to repel people. So just have fun. Just have fun. Have fun. Have fun. Have fun. Be nervous, but have fun. Yes. Yeah. Nostalgic is like I've copyrighted four songs on an EP just to learn the process. I'm sure no one would have wanted them, but I did it anyway. The rest of my library is exposed. <laughs> exposed. Zara said, I love the vids. We're out of nowhere. It's all Klee. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we need more Klee dad jokes and nerd facts. I love rocks too. Mm -hmm. I'll have to do some dad jokes and yep. nerd facts video. KR is like, I'm glad I asked. <laughs> So I've got, I make my husband put together my metal grids. Oh. <laughs> we were joking about doing your man tasks. Yeah. Uh, because Yesterday I was like, I lift heavy things and I take them out. You've done well with your man tasks yeah. for the day. I only had kids steal small dollar items, but honestly just happy that they love them, said Clover. Kids, yeah. those little urchins. Little urchins. Man, they're the ones that come in with like a little ball of change and a like crinkled up dollar and they're like, I want buy something for my mom do you have something you're like, like damn it what do you have two dollars and 35 cents yeah yeah we have something yeah naomi's like a lot of artists seem to separate shows a couple weeks i know you've done them every week if it's your full-time gig would you recommend every week or is it a week or two in between good i mean it depends on where you're at i would recommend for i mean i honestly we we went overboard but also it was good for us. It was good for us because it really put our focus on what we were doing. But that's it. It dominated our lives. We didn't have anything else. And luckily for us, it was us. So it wasn't like I was off doing this thing and ignoring her. Like we were doing this thing together. It's good for your career and bad for your sanity. Yeah. Um, so you have to kind of you gotta, you gotta decide weigh it for, out. You got to weigh it out and decide for yourself. <laughs> Phil's like, is Printful only print on demand or can I order prints to sell in person from there? You can order prints and have them uh, and have them sent to you. There's a max on how much merch you can order at your discounted rate from Printful. I think you can only order like three, three, three items, items a month. month. Yeah. Um, so that's the only hiccup with that. Yeah. With ordering like stuff to take to shows. Um. It's automatic in the USA. It is and it isn't, Zara. Like, it is and it isn't. It's not defensible in a court of law if you don't have an official copyright. And like if you have to take someone to court to sue them for rights, if you don't have an actual copyright, you're not going to get very far. As far as like using the but, poor man's copyright. like. But, but you might. So that's the thing is there's a lot of question marks when it's not copywritten, when you haven't officially mm -hmm. copywritten it. But here's the other side to that. If you legit had to take someone to court over a song, you better hope that that song grossed you buku money because the court fees to sue someone over music rights generally are going to be more than what the song was worth to you. Yeah. So is having a copyright worth it? Are you going to pursue legal action if you have to? Yeah. You can send someone a cease and desist letter without a copyright, especially if they're not like... Taylor Swift, you know, or somebody that you could never go up against. Yeah. Um, so you could still you could still take that that the legal action, but when it comes to like paying court fees and stuff, you know, first off, if you have something that is very popular, boom, copyright it. You know, it's going to cost you fifteen dollars to copyright this thing, so just copyright it. Obviously, for somebody like me, I'm not going to copyright every single work of art that I create because um, they're all originals. They're made by me. Um, but if I have, uh, let's say, a T-shirt design that I created that's really popular and I don't want anybody to steal it you know, or, or sell it themselves, then I might copyright it. So it's things like that. Like Now, with my books, those are copyrighted. Those are my, my books. My books go out there and like, I don't want just anybody. It's a matter of principle and. and yeah. I don't yeah. want anybody just grabbing my material and then like, you know, uh, sharing it and me not being able to prove legally that it's, that it's mine. So things like that. Where can we find your art fest schedule? Is our calendar updated on our site? Yes. On our website. Yes. On our website. 
Original works of art are automatically protected by copyright law in the USA as soon as they are created in tangible form. That's the poor man's copyright. That's, that that is mm-hmm. they they are copywritten, but they won't hold up in court. There are, th- <laughs> you know, there are, there are things there that they are copywritten. They do belong to you. You created it. You own the rights to that work. Mm-hmm. Um, if it comes down to a legal battle, then there's you know it's better to have a paper trail. That shows that it's yours. Having a timestamp on something like an official release date on a song or a video or an official published date on a book or, you know, anything or for um, paintings, you know, having a having a timestamp on social media, even where it's posted and you can see when it was created is helpful. And you could take that to court and fight it. And essentially, guys, that's what copyright is for. It's for going to court and suing somebody over your work. And if you're not willing to do that, then it really doesn't matter if you've paid for a copyright or not. That's really what it comes down to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Christine is like, oh, I have no hopes of making money. It's going to be alongside an event in a kindergarten. I don't expect parents to want to buy stuff from me. They probably spend a lot of money on their kids already. Oh, then just have fun. Just have fun. Yeah. And, and you know, this that's a, the best way to do it because then it'll just be bonus when somebody buys something. And, yeah, just have fun. What is a city vendor fee? Art. See, I'm still reading Art Vibe Lady. Am I reading this long? long? Yeah, no, art, it says... art Vibe Lady. Message back right now. If you're not part of the city, the festival is in. You have to pay your city's vendor fee. What is this? This is not the same thing as your reseller license that you get issued from the state. Cities will have what they call a retail peddler fee. It's often due twice a year uh, for the city that you live in. Each city has different rules. You would have to go to your county clerk. Each county. <clears throat> yeah. Each county has different rules on it. So It's usually cheap. It's like 30 bucks. Yeah. Uh, and basically you have you have your county and you um, are you have your license right and then when you sell somewhere else like they'll like we've had some shows where they'll come out and they'll be like you know you need to be uh, the the city will come out or the county will come out and say like do you have your vendor's license so that's that's the legal side. That's the legal side of getting getting your yeah. So your your resale permit allows you to buy and sell mer- goods tax free. Your re- your city permit, which uh, they call it your retail certificate, is through the county or city. Sometimes it's a once a year fee. Yeah. Now I've never heard of a city imposing it on non residents, but I suppose they could. Yeah, like, it could be different in every state. Um, it's not the city that you're in, though. That That's where it gets a little, like, it's Message usually for the right city you're in. Now, if you're not part of the city festival, is, then you have to pay your city vendor's fee. What is this? Usually you're paying it for the city that you reside and show in. I don't, they don't usually impose that for, like, if you're just traveling into a city. I would be like, okay, well, I'm not, I'm not, I don't reside in that city, so how do I go about doing that i would honestly ask her like i'm are you, sorry are you sure are you I, sure because i'm not sure that that's how it works lucy's like it sounds like a few folks need art buddies to do fests with art buddies are good maybe like maybe the rogue community and beyond the greater rogue community could start like an art buddy networking system that would be great to help each great. other yeah, because a lot of a lot of us are not very far from one another, and that would be mm-hmm. that would be great. It's so much more fun to do a festival with someone, um, you know, especially if you like them. If someone makes a lot of money over the song they stole from you, you need to copyright the song to prevent that. I mean, in that case, yeah. And then the hope is that you sue them for more money than what your legal fees cost you, but you don't know at the onset. Yeah. <laughs> If that's going to be the case, it is a risk, you guys, putting, you know, putting anything out there. But it's, it, you know, you're it's either, a risk we take as yeah, creators. Yeah, you either put it out there or you don't. And that's the biggest thing because I've also had a lot of artists that's like, well, I don't show my art because I'm afraid that somebody It's like, if you don't show your art, 
how how is anybody gonna know <laughs> that you're an artist or what you create? I'm like, ah. Doctor Mix is like, I'm sorry, got everyone talking about copyright. It's all good. I to be honest, I, bl- I blame you. I, know, I blame you, Doctor Mix. It's good. We should have all the conversations, <laughs> including copyright. To be honest, I don't have none of my music copyrighted, like 400 <laughs> something tracks. And that's the thing, right? It's a personal choice. It really is. It's a personal choice. You know, like the the only thing is like. If it does, if it if it does, then you know. Somewhere, I didn't copyright my books when they released. I think I copyright wrote my books like a year later. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I, you can retroactive I, copyright. Yeah, because I forgot. So like, if there's something that you're like, well, this is really picking up steam, and you're like, you know, maybe it's a good idea to copyright, then copyright it. You know that that I think that that's. I don't know. It's a personal choice. And if something picks up steam or something does really well and then it's not copyrighted and, you know, there comes an issue, then we face the issue right then and there. Mm -hmm. That's basically how it goes. Christine is like, I need art buddies. Jack is like, I need an art buddy for sure. Art buddy system would be awesome. Art buddies. We, We are in favor of art buddies. Okay, here's what I know to do for art buddies. Beyond that, I'm not sure. But on our Rogue Community membership site... We could start a group, Art Buddies, and that way the rogues can network with each other for Art Buddyship. That would be cool. We will start that group. For those of you who have not joined the membership site, consider doing so. Tears start at a dollar. And we're going to do this. Um, And there's my pathetic sales pitch for that. But beyond the rogue site, I don't know how one would do a networking thing. I mean, I Um, guess you could do a Facebook group. I guess you could. I'm so not a fan of Facebook. But we're going to do it on the rogue site. That's how we're going to kick that off. Serenity Studio said, can I come visit you in Oil City and hang out? Yeah. Yeah. Just let us know. You got to let us know ahead of time. And if we're not not busy, and even if we are busy, we'll try and make time for you. Mm Mm-hmm. Clee, I heard your song on the radio, WXPN. No kidding, Kathy? What? Really? Write down WXPN right so down. I can be, um, so I can look up what where that is, because I'm curious. WXPN is playing Clee's song. Yeah. Thank you for letting us know. That's so cool. Art buddy, aka co-fester. You'll be co-festing oh, with your co-fester. <laughs> That's good. I like it. Do, in he, the meetings, do we stand up and we're like, hi. I'm, I'm your co faster. I'm your co faster. <laughs> Hopefully, means, not like that. It means to rot. <laughs> good joke. Yeah. That was, a, that was a good dad joke. Yeah. Do you ever you. naturally harvest pigments from the earth like red shale? Ooh. I, that is on my list. I've been doing a lot of research on creating my own pigments and I am fascinated um, by, by that. So I have seen some deposits like rust deposits where I'm like, Ooh, that's going to be, mm-hmm. that's going to be pigments. Or like taking a hammer to some lapis. Yeah. See what's what. Yeah. Or a hammer to ladybugs. No, that's no. unacceptable. <laughs> unacceptable that's how the masters made their paint well that's rude okay <laughs> i'm in reed city michigan said isabee stop by if you head north oh, definitely awesome. yeah most definitely um christina's like we're like way over time but we'll oh. do a few more questions yeah. is it okay to put the same pieces on multiple shows as long as it's not all the same pieces or does it imply that it didn't sell and decrease in value oh no we brought the same Christina, pieces out no to every do, show. Do not worry about it's that. It's all good. Okay, and first off, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to try not to rant, but I'm going to tell you something. Your art, if it doesn't sell, doesn't devalue your art. You created the art. It's there. Just because it didn't sell at this show or that show doesn't make it any less good than anything that sold. It just means that the right person didn't find it. The more shows you take it to, the more chances that the right person will find it. Get that whole idea that if something doesn't sell, that it means that it's not good out of your brain because it is going to screw you up moving forward, right? No, take, I, I could tell you right now, I would take the same workout to the market every week and to other shows and I create something and whatever. And sometimes I would just move my pieces from where they usually were on my wall and people would come in. It's like, Oh wow. Is that new? 
You know, so like they don't, people aren't paying attention. They see what they like and that's what they pay attention to. And it's you true. want that person that saw the artwork at the last show and didn't buy it to come to this show and have it stare at them again where they're like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to buy it. That's what you want. That's what you want. Blue Penguin is like, is there an art buddy finding website? Well, we're going to turn the rogue site part of it into an art buddy <laughs> finding website. So join us there if you want to. Um, <laughs> F Facebook. Bring uh, it on Discord. <laughs> Sweeties is like, I'm not on Facebook either. Yay. Yes, please, Art Buddy group. Yeah. Yay, radio request. Ra I know, that's cool. That's very cool. Mostly you just want to sketch together with people. That's fun. Absolutely. We have had some rogues coordinate some um, some sketch, like some meetups and sketches mm -hmm. and things. It's, uh, oh my God, I thought I was hi, way Christine. too late. Hi, Christine. We have run over, so we get to Lucy, say hi. Lucy's like, it's not milk. Yes, it's not milk. It's not milk. That's Your art right. is not milk. It doesn't go bad. Drives me crazy. Your art will always increase in value. Indeed. And that's the thing. If it doesn't sell, I have some, some of my art. I've got hundreds. I've sold so much artwork, but I have so much artwork that hasn't sold. You know what I mean? And all that artwork does is go up in value as my prices increase. It just goes up in value. It just keeps going up in value. WXPN is a Philly station from University of Penn. University of PA. I'm near Lancaster. Awesome. We're checking That's it super out. That's super cool That's of them so to cool. be playing my song. Dude, University, those, those stations, those are the good ones. Yeah, if you can get on college radio, you are well on your way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, and I say that with the utmost seriousness. I'm not even trying to be funny. That's awesome that they're playing the song. Yes, I had a piece I didn't sell at multiple shows, and the same piece was just accepted into a jury Yes, indeed, show. indeed. Mm -hmm. WXPN is the University of PA in Philadelphia. So How anyways. much would you price a 20 by 20 average don't know. Oh, there's too Depends. many variables. <laughs> am I using texture? How many layers am I doing? What is the piece about? Um, you know, there, there's a lot of factors. How much time did I spend working on the art? Am I using just acrylics? Am I using oils? Am I using multiple medias? Um, there's a lot of factors in there. Honestly, you know, and for an estimated price, if somebody said, uh, you know, I would like a piece that's 20 by 20, I'd like to commission you for that. How much would it be? I would take 20 times 20. Um, what is 20 times 20? <laughs> <laughs> Math. I don't know right now. 2,000? No. <laughs> 400. 400. So I do 400. Math. So that's 400 uh, squared. So this is just one example. By the way, pricing the art in this book that I wrote. I have an entire section in there about pricing art and the different methods, right? So like, let's say, ba -ba, I do decide an average is a dollar a square inch. I would tell them, you know, to get it started, uh, something that's 20 by 20, maybe about $400, anywhere between 400 to a thousand dollars. Don't know. As a jumping off point. As a jumping off point. I think it's board. hilarious that I can't, could not do that simple math. I use math every day of my I know. life. You know, and in my brain, I was like, it's 400. <laughs> and I was like, it's I don't know. I have no idea. I'm trying to do some exponent stuff over here. Um, anyone here in the Pacific Northwest? It seems like everyone is East Coast. Oh, we have oh, a ton there's, of... There's a ton. There's a ton of you in the Pacific Northwest. You guys are everywhere. Everywhere. Um, there's a lot of rogues from up there and a lot of the YouTube community from up there also. Lori's They're... here. Hi guys. Hi, Just Lori. realized you're, we're about to leave Lori, but thanks for being here. Yeah. Adirondack Pixie said, unless your art is a banana tape to a wall, then yeah, it goes bad. Unless fruit flies are part of it. <laughs> True. Fruit flies. Blue penguins. I am in Southern Idaho, said Susan. We've got another rogue here in Idaho. Mm -hmm. And I know for sure we've got at least one or two Pacific Northwesters on the stream right now. Um, I wonder what would happen if you crushed some dried flowers with strong colors and mixed it with some medium. I don't know what and paint with that. Oh, you should do it. Yeah, I, I think that probably would produce some interesting results. You should do results. it. That would be really cool. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, CJ said, I had two dragons on Etsy for one and a half years. Love them, but no one bought them. At my first live show, they both sold. Yeah. That's awesome. Turmeric for yellow. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Turmeric is excellent. for you, But it's, it does such a good job that you have to be really careful not to get it on stuff because it'll be forever yellow. James, hey, just wanted hey, to James. say your musical uploads have been great lately. Really enjoyed the live set and the music video. Thank uh, you, James. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Squeezie's Cat World. 400. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks James. for that. Not 2,000, as it turns out. Yeah, I know. I, I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> <laughs> khakis. Clay's the one that makes her math. <laughs> I do math every day. Yep. I just had a moment. Apparently, when I'm put on the spot, I'm like, no, I can't do math. Sorry. Anyone in Hungary? Barb is like 400 to 1,000. Sounds good. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, there's so many factors involved. So many factors involved that if, like, it's just a, you know, price like that, it's like, this is the range. This is where I go with that. Um, you know, and we'll work within that price unless you throw some weird shit at me. And I'm like, I want crushed diamonds in this piece. Then it's going to cost way more. Mm-hmm. More than whole diamonds, actually, because yep. crushing them would be really hard. 24 by 24 is 600 for me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. We got some people chiming in. Chehalis, Washington, Northern Idaho. Uh Serenity said WXPN is a hugely popular station. It's not really just a college station. It's much more than that, really. That's so rad. That's I have so no cool. idea Thank how you. how the song ended up on the station, but I am super grateful. I'm going to have to reach out and thank them. Mm-hmm. And also, if you guys uh, that are local want to call them and request that they play it more even... That wouldn't be terrible we get either. Everyone, everyone to like request like they're ready to say, Will you play Fools I Fold My Underwear, please? Play me the Folding Your Underwear song. Yep. Yeah. That's awesome. Have a great night, said Stuff the Corn. Thank you so much for the live. It's dinner time. Awesome. Word. Yeah, it is we dinner are time. heading out to dinner uh, right it, now. We're staying in to we're dinner. We're staying, staying in to dinner. But we are getting off the stream for dinner. Hi, Ginger, Leo. Ginger said, everyone, please like the video before you go. So GooTubes know Rafi and Klee are factually the best. Thank you, Ginger. Thank you, Ginger. <laughs> and yes, please do thumbs up our live stream if you care to. Look at us actually promoting stuff like our rogue membership site and your books and I mean, the like button i mean you did that I shameless didn't. yeah shameless unapologetic as you should be with your art and anything you create <laughs> yeah lupita i recently made a painting on wood no bigger than my hand it's a religious painting my aunt tried to offer me 30 bucks i feel like i wouldn't give it for three and that's yeah the piece that you fall in love with yep yeah you know, and when you feel that way about something and you've put your heart and soul and you're, you have that connection with it, you don't have any reason to sell it off for $30, yep. right? You can hold out for 30000 or you might keep it forever. It's your prerogative. And sometimes people want to be supportive and they want to offer you money that they're comfortable with to, to buy a piece and they mean well by it. So you can be like... Just, um, and well, I'm not going to sell you this piece for $30, but here I have this bottle cap mm-hmm. that I like. I wouldn't buy a bottle cap for $30. How dare you? It depends on the bottle cap, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Be unapologetic, said Zara. Live stream is much appreciated as all. All right. Love you guys. This was awesome. It was awesome hanging out with you, talking about art. We definitely ran about half an hour uh, later. Because we love you. And it's fun to talk to you. The (laughs) Skivvy song is the best song. (laughs) Thank you. Blue Penguin said, underwear is my new favorite word because of Glee's angel voice. (laughs) That's awesome. You guys are the best. This was fun, you guys. This was fun. Good, great talks. I loved, I I love these questions that you guys bring up in the content that we talk I about. I know, and I know that we could not answer everything. No. If you have a burning question that we did not get to, you're welcome to email us through the website. Also, we have tons of ways to ask us questions on the Rogue membership site. Yep. If you care to join us there. If not, it's all good and we love you no matter what. Yep. If Prince had made that bottle cap, I would buy it. I mean, yeah. There you go. See? That's a that's a situation See? That's in what which I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. How 
dare you. I'm just saying, like, you got to tell me the story of the bottle cap. Story is everything. Someone talks about that regularly on his YouTube know, channel. I don't know, some guy with a bandana. Freaking jerk. Just Lucy's talk. like, rock on, kid. <laughs> All right. Bye, you guys. Love and jazz hands. You guys are awesome. Dinner awaits, said Ginger. I concur. Wait, I gotta make sure that it's not the last time I hit the record button instead of the end stream. I'm about to get my jazz hands workout while Rafi figures (laughs) out how to end it. I got it. (laughs) Okay. Goodbye.